is Parmenia, a tiny mountain in the French Alps, where the passage of centuries has left its trace of violent conquest and of monastic calm, of fabulous legend and of mysterious encounter. During the reign of Louis XIV, when France lay wasted by endless war, its starving rabble seething in discontent and rebellion, there arrived on this spot a young traveler who had trudged all the way from Paris, a document of the greatest importance in his possession, in search of a man condemned by the courts. That condemned man was Jean-Baptiste de La Salle. I was that traveler. My name is André. When my story begins, I was just another rogue among hundreds from the slums of Reims, where everyone knew hunger, ignorance, and despair. It was in the year 1680, on the steps of the university chapel, the very day he received the golden cross of St. Remigius, that I first saw Father de La Salle. His story is disconcerting, unbelievable, paradoxical, true. Thank you, Andre. Those thieving pigs would have taken it all. Who gave you all that? Why, the cannon. Jobert, what's a cannon? Andre, you haven't heard of them? Hmm, well, cannons are church officials. They're rich as kings with fine mansions and gold. I'm no use for cannons. Those men are rotten. I'm with you. I beg your pardon, Father. This is a convent, isn't it? The convent of the infant Jesus, that's right. Thank you. Whom do you wish to see, Monsieur? The Mother Superior, please, Sister.
You're from Reims? Yes, I am. Not I. I'm from Rouen. I brought two letters. One for the Mother Superior and one for the Canon de la Salle. Uh, do you know him by any chance? Not very well. I hear he's very grand and impressive. Oh, well, that's a bit exaggerated. Oh, no, I've been assured that it's so. But just between us two, those priests are generous with words, but with money, they're quite miserly. I see that you're a man of experience. Indeed, that is right. Not much gets by me. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, good morning, Monsieur de la Salle. So you are... You see, not very impressive. Oh, pardon me. May I present Monsieur... Yes. My name's Adrien Niel. From Rouen, and not very much gets by him. He has two letters of introduction. One for you, Reverend Mother, and one for me. I'll wait in there if you like. No, please stay. What I have to say is no secret, nor unfortunately very flattering to me. The city denied our request? They say more important things are needed such as aqueducts, markets, and public facilities. Yet our work is necessary, too. That may be true, but we can no longer deceive ourselves. Wealthy people don't wish their servants educated for fear they might not want to remain servants. Poor people need their children to help them, even though they may not know how to read. Schools are a luxury some people do not wish and others cannot afford. With no schools, what will happen to our orphans here? They can only count on your devotion and my personal assistance, which is quite inadequate. What a shame we can't get the money we need. Yes, it is a shame. But let's not sadden our friend here. Sir, what can we do for you? There's nothing you can do now. What about your letters? They're useless now. They're from your aunt, Madame de Maifère. Perhaps you've heard we've established a public school in Rouen. We thought you might be able to help us do the same thing in Reims. You obviously cannot. I suppose that I might as well leave. I suggest we go on talking, Monsieur Niel. About this? After I've read your letter. After all, it's addressed to me. Where are we going? Someplace where we can talk quietly. Ah, my coat of arms. This is my aunt's carriage. She absolutely insisted I bring it. She did well. If you didn't have a carriage, how could we get to my house? The two of us couldn't fit in the litter. <laughs> Are you going to take me to your house, monsieur? Yes. and clear the streets. We'll do as we like. Mind your own business. Go back to your church. What do you want here? And you. What do you want? Just now. Not a soul who's worth that. It's the priest as I live and breathe. Hold your tongue, woman. What do you want with us? I'm looking for a boy. I think his name is Andre. There's no one called Andre here. Now get out. Leave us alone. Now you keep your head still, brat, so I can get the bugs out of your head. I said get out. Keep quiet, you.
Leave him be, Coco. Is this your daughter? Yes. And she lives here? Where else should she live? In the cathedral? I said keep quiet. I'll say anything I like. I don't want to hear him preach any sermons. No, stop it! Let him be. Go on, you pig, get out. You heard what she said. Off with you. I'm sure I can use this. Can you? What is your name? Bernarda. No priest has ever come to this house before. Don't let him take his pleasure here. He can always find it with his own kind. My own? I wonder who they are. Yeah. <laughs> Andre's a smart boy. I'm sure he'll not get caught. You were away so long. What happened to you? Nothing. And yet, quite a lot. Fate helped me to remember a lesson I'd forgotten. There's a misery much sadder than that which begs at the cathedral door. I think I may be able to help you, my friend. Are those portraits of your family? My ancestors. Here's my family. They may not be warriors, but they're much harder to handle. There they are with some friends. Please introduce yourself. I have an urgent matter to attend to. Consider yourself at home. Fetch Monsieur Niel's luggage. He'll be staying with us. Yes, Monsieur. I'm sure you prefer that I stay at an inn at the address. Nonsense. I'll tell him to get your room ready. Now, if you'd like me to help you, do as I say. All right. Please go in. I'll take your thing, sir. You're our new coachman, aren't you? No, not I. Well, then, who are you? Uh, Adrien Niel of Rouen. I'm at your service. Then I suppose you're the cook my brother hired just the other day. No, I'm not the cook either. I'm a schoolmaster. Oh. Monsieur. Well, well, I see that you already introduced yourself. Yes, by profession. Before you go up to your room, come meet the rest of my family. Jean, may I ask you? Yes? Is he staying here with us? Yes, he is. And just how long do you intend to lodge this guest in our house? Precisely until the day your older brother helps him open a school for poor children. Which is why he came here to rest. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't like to be any bother, monsieur. If your family objects, perhaps I'd better go. Not at all. On the contrary, I have an idea. Several ideas. And they all have the same faces. The faces of children. But teachers to teach them, where will you find them, Neil? Teachers are scarce, I must confess to that. They're paid so poorly, you see. To start, we'll have to recruit anybody we can find here. Even soldiers and poets. The Duc de Montrois has begun by teaching his footmen. His footmen, in turn, educate others. But you don't even have footmen for this school. But I'll comb the city. Don't worry, I'll find teachers. <laughs> May I? I can't stop you, monsieur. You'll just barge in anyway. I thought we'd seen the last of you. What do you want here? Is your husband here? He's here somewhere. And your daughter? She's here, I guess. Bernada? Don't expect to carry off Bernada. I already warned her. Never to trust you. You did well. Cannons are no better than anyone else. No, they're not. What is it, Mama? You remember me, don't you? Oh. How are you, Bernarda? Fine, thank you. I came to get my cloak. And I thought these could be useful. At least they're more useful than my cloak. 
Here. I brought you some shoes as well. And look, you can take some of this off to make it more simple. And it will keep you warm. This might be all right for your mother. They must have cost a lot of money. Yes, a lot. But we don't need fancy clothes. We need a chance to work to get out of this hole. You hold your tongue. I noticed that your daughter was without shoes. But she don't care. She badly needs warm clothing. I do all I can. That's not true. You do nothing but lie about in the street all day. There's no other way to earn our bread. I can't ply a trade. There's no work for me. I do all the work. You wouldn't have to if you got married. To Andre. I love someone else, Papa. But Andre's a good provider, a brave lad. Well, he looks like a fine fellow. Please, could I have my cloak? I don't think you'll be needing it anymore, will you? Not anymore, thanks to you. I hope you'll be coming to see us again. But gifts aren't necessary. What? Do you mean you're the canon? Yes. Among many. Good afternoon. Goodbye, Bernarda. I'll be back as long as the door stays open. Wait. Do you know what I think? You're a coward. You were afraid to say you knew who I was. You didn't forget how you lost your gold cross. It so happens I did lose a cross. If you know the person who found it, ask him if he'd like to sell it back to me. He can bring it to the cathedral. Why should I bother? What do I get? My friendship. It's probably something nobody's ever offered to you. And it's worth a great deal more than this. Goodbye, Andre. No one's going to confess, eh? Very well. Then the innocent must suffer with the guilty. I will not have a thief living under my roof. You'll all be discharged indiscriminately, all of you. What's the matter? Some gowns and shoes of mine are missing. We're looking for the thief. You approve of that? Why, absolutely. Whoever took them must be turned out of this house. He must leave at once. Where are you going? What's the matter? I'm obeying our uncle. I'm leaving this house. What do you mean by that? I don't understand. Well, that I am your thief. Forgive my sister. You may go. Now, will you please explain? I took those clothes from your closet. You have so many. I gave them to someone who has nothing to wear. Were they too good to give away? Never mind, Jean. At least you took them for a good cause. Our family has been humiliated just the same. Heavens, Uncle, don't be so dramatic. I blame that rascal, Neil. He's driven you utterly insane. Poor Neil. He can't even control his own teachers or make them follow a schedule, conform to discipline. Every morning he has to round them up all over the city. Actually, he's coming here to see me this evening. But why tonight, Jean? Why not? Surely you recall that we asked all of our friends here to a ball tonight. It'll be the most wonderful ball of the century. Your brother, Jean-Baptiste. Oh, my dear, he's expecting important guests. Much too grand for us. He won't come join us till much later, I'm afraid. He spends no time with us at all. I came only to see him, my dear. Surely not. 
Father de la Salle is expecting us. Forgive our intrusion. Uh, good evening. Follow me. I just wonder what else he's up to. Father de la Salle, tonight we have come in full force. I'm afraid our appearance created quite a stir downstairs. I wouldn't be surprised. There are so few teachers here in Rance. Welcome. Shall we start with you? <laughs> and do you know how to teach? Maybe. Put me to the test. <laughs> are you able to teach? Well, I hope I can. They need training, you see. We'll make good teachers, if you'll be willing to assist us. I will supervise them, Father. Come, tell me about your problems. It would be best if I could train them together, Monsieur. I think they should live in one house by themselves. Do you know a place where they might stay? Why, yes. Then tell me where we can lodge our school masters. Here. But your family, they'll object to it. These are also my brothers. Excuse me, I don't feel well. I'll see you to your room. Do you care to leave with us, Louis? No, I'm still eating dinner. Come with us. I want my dessert. But René has had enough, I'm sure. What about you, Uncle? Aren't you going to join the rest of the family? I wish I could. What I'm going. You? Why? I won't be humiliated. You dare be so impertinent. I... Just a moment. You're right, Monsieur Villard. I apologize for my family. What's the matter? Aren't you hungry? Or were you thinking of someone else? <laughs> yes, I am. Until tonight, my friends. Now for some teaching. Only teach them something better than what you learned here today. Marvelous teachers. I'd hate to be their student. <clears throat> Give them time. Neil will train them. I rather doubt it. The last six days, Niel hasn't been near his schoolmasters. They teach by themselves now. That's at least some progress. No, five times five is. Five, two, and the five in the order they arise. Yes, yes. And the general said to me, listen, Sergeant, you take command of the whole battalion because I'm going to hide. <laughs> <laughs> Dominus, 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 no. The declension is Domine, Domini, Dominum. Don't you want to learn Latin? And why not? What good is it, monsieur? I'll explain once again. Learning Latin is really the most important what? part. You mean Monsieur Niel is planning to leave? Yes, he is. He sows the seed but cannot wait for the harvest. Niel's a traitor. He's just a dreamer. When Niel goes, who will run the school? We need a supervisor. We need someone with great courage and determination. Right? Yes, exactly. Someone who will devote himself entirely to our work, without seeking compensation. But who will be willing to shoulder such a burden? Must we go, Father de la Salle? We'd like to stay a while longer. Well, now, boys, school is out. Here now, button up. One, two, Better? One, two, one, what's that? Two, one, 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 two. Now, who told you to march like little soldiers? No, oh, walk naturally. Naturally. <laughs> Your Reverend, since Neil has left, my nephew has done nothing but attend to affairs of this school. Yes, I'm aware of this. Will you persuade him to give it up? I can positively assure you. I won't. You refuse? I'm sure there's no point. His mind is completely made up. Your nephew has a very special mission. I wonder. But he's insane. He spent a fortune on that school and those good-for-nothing schoolmasters. I find it absurd. So do I. 
But this new school is quite amazing. Also, I think it likely that this absurd institution, as you say, will gain the recognition of his eminence. No. Indeed. And surprising as it sounds to you, he might call him to Paris. A pretty sight they'd make in Paris, my nephew and those lunatics. Our situation hasn't improved at all since Neo went away. That's not true. But it is. I was happier before, when we did as we liked. We taught without methods or discipline then. You can't deny that in six months, LaSalle has helped us get organized. A new problem has arisen. What? Monsieur de La Salle has been criticized by everyone. His friends and family are all opposed to our work. But he still spends his days here in school. And what if his money runs out? Maybe he'll decide the school costs too much and we'll all get dismissed. And then where'll we be? <laughs> La Salle could shut down the school at any time. He has no obligation to us at all. That's ridiculous. Monsieur de La Salle would never abandon the school. Never. I will never close the doors of this house, even though I'm not the one who opened them. We gain nothing, monsieur, by staying. It seems we've all been enlisted in the wrong outfit. How have I failed you? I've offered you my own home, my own table. We can't stay here much longer, you know, with your family. Then we'll open more schools, where there'll be room for everybody. What about you, Villar? What are you thinking? That I am not Monsieur de La Salle. Only Nicholas Villar. If our work fails, I'll have to beg in the streets. Whereas you... While I go on as wealthy as ever. With my cannon ship, my coat of arms, my palace, and my family. Is that what you mean? I think we all do, monsieur. Not I. Thank you, Pierre. But they're right. No, not in the least. Villar sees things as they are. But I'll go ask someone who's never wrong. Have you lost your mind? You must tell me what I've just heard isn't true. And what have you just heard? That you've given up your cannon ship. Oh, yes. And I'm giving all this up as well. Then it is the truth. I divided everything into equal shares among the family. This house was my share. I don't really need it, so I decided to sell it. Your ancestors built this house. Oh, I don't think they'll mind. Their descendants mind. Have you considered them? Have they all gone? Not all, Jean. I want to be with you. And Marie? Why, she's been crying, Jean. Yes, well, Marie seems to be crying to a certain musical accompaniment. What about you, Uncle? Do you feel like crying? Jean-Baptiste. But what will you do with the money you still have? Our work needs it. For the poor. There are so many of them. You cannot blame yourself for that. It's not your fault. No, and it's not their fault that they're hungry. Nor that the plague is at the gates of the city. Still don't give up your house and all your wealth. Dear uncle, real wealth is the ability to think and feel, not being possessed by possessions, to give, to receive, to reason. Children know this. 
There's no class distinction among them. If I can open their minds and let the sun enter in, if enough of us can do this, if we can reach past the boundaries marked rich and poor, if we can open their minds to this light, the world will become a brighter place, closer to peace, closer to human fraternity. Well, is there anything else you'd like to know, my curious uncle? No. Good. These were the last things left. Now they're gone. I think it's time for me to go, too. This is really yours. It's my last gift to you. Goodbye, Marie. Father LaSalle's whole fortune during these last two years has been used up. It's all gone? Mm -hmm. How do you exist? Mm -hmm. We all live on nothing. How did the money all go? Getting food for the needy. The plague is still upon us. Food and supplies can scarcely reach the town. War is breaking out. But we've managed to keep the school open. Through hard work. Whose work? Oh, Monsieur de la Salle's. But we've helped. Still teaching the children? Yes, and distributing bread every day. As long as it lasts, that is. <laughs> Here, old man. There's none left. There's no more. The teachers have no bread now. I can do without mine. I want bread. So do the others. Teacher, Monsieur Bartholomew is ill. I don't know what lesson you're supposed to have today, but ask me what you'd like to know, and I shall try to answer. What would you like to ask? Why don't the teachers let us have a little fun in class? I'll see to that. We need laughter as much as we do bread. Yes? I was wondering, tomorrow will we get anything to eat? I was wondering the same thing. Look, Father de Salle, the wind has blown the door shut. Now go open it. The doors of this school must always be open wide. Why, well, hello, Andre. Are you waiting for someone? It isn't safe out. You're going to report me for stealing, aren't you? If you let me go, you can take that. I don't need it. Huh. Don't you want bread? I told you I don't need it. I can rely on someone who never fails me. 
You can go now. But when you do, leave the door open. It always is. Soon we'll have a school in every corner of France. And when there are more of us, we'll fill the world with Christian schools for all our brothers. That's the word. Brothers. Brothers of the Christian schools. We'll wear our own habit. We'll take a vow of obedience. Later on, a vow of poverty and chastity. May I speak? Please do, Rabbi Eck. About this vow of poverty. Must our life always be like this? I've been so poor all my life, I wanted to improve my lot. So did I. You see what we mean. We came here to become teachers, not martyrs. This morning, you gave our bread to beggars in the street. They need it. You gave us nothing. That's true. But it's all I can offer you. We can't survive like this. Everyone agrees with me. Speak, you cowards. When he's not with us, you're free enough with your words. Why squabble? We'd rather go. Come on. It's about time we pulled up camp. Bye, monsieur. This isn't a rebellion. But we're worried about our future here. Please understand. I do understand. And anyone who wants to can come back tomorrow. I'll wait for you. How quickly our dreams evaporate. Now you're the only one left. I'd stay, but... But I have Bernarda to think of. I... You don't have to stay anymore. I understand she needs you more than I do. They'll be back tomorrow. I'm sure. But you won't. And don't change your mind. I like men who keep their word. Goodbye, Pierre. And thank you. Is that you, Pierre? Who are you? What do you want? I've come to stay and be one of you. I want to be a teacher. You come too late. Don't you need more teachers? I have no money to pay you or food for you to eat. That doesn't matter. Who are you? You see, I didn't forget your name. I've lost this game. The hostess always wins the play. Why else do you suppose I ask you here? <laughs> Antoinette! Please come to the window a minute. The schoolmasters, Antoinette, are wearing their new habits. La Salle's teachers, you mean? You must have heard the church has given them her official blessing. And the Duke de Mazarin has recently contributed an enormous endowment. 
Your son is one of their pupils, isn't he, Antoinette? Yes, they're the finest teachers in Reims. But how funny they look in their clumsy boots and unbecoming hats. They dress like peasants. They hardly dress to please ladies of society like you, dear. They're teachers, mind you. Are there many of them? Quite a few. And their numbers increase every day. They plan to take their vows, I'm told, at the Church of Our Lady of Liesse. At the shrine of Our Lady of Joy, we vowed fidelity to him and to a common ideal, even should we be obliged to live on bread alone to see it through. Thus was our society founded, the brothers of the Christian schools, the first order of laymen ever to bind themselves together to be teachers. Not monks, not priests, just educators. Then May came to Champagne, bringing new life and hope, as it had brought Father de La Salle new helpers, not poor mercenaries hungering for his wealth, but wealthy men seeking to share his poverty. For now he had nothing left to offer anyone, except the challenge of this wondrous new venture. And so Father de La Salle, Brother Voyant, and I set off for Paris. Here's your destination, Rue de la Princesse. That's where the Paris school is. Paris at last. You will be staying here? For now, yes. I can't understand what the likes of you are doing here. Police has a bad reputation. We'll give it a better one. Thanks for everything, Thanks, my friend. Nothing. Good luck to you. You'll need it. Hey! Monsieur Raffron? Yes? I came in without knocking as I thought I heard someone crying. As you see, it's nothing. Flogging, that's all. And this child is nothing? He's lazy. Well, he hasn't been studying his Latin. Maybe you don't know how to approach him. Go sit down. No one will hurt you. Are you a teacher? Oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't introduce myself. Are you Father de La Salle by any chance? Our superior told me you'd be here. I'd be most delighted to show you our school. Thank you. Tell me, what sort of schedule do you follow here? What schedule? Mm -hmm. Well, the students come to school when they like. When they're tired, we send them away. Quite a schedule. And you teach them one by one. Why, naturally. And while you teach one of them, the others have a good time. Why not? What's this? I see. Gambling. How's their writing? I don't know. Guild of Master Calligraphers has expressly forbidden us to teach handwriting. <laughs> Each particular guild teaches its own special skills. <laughs> and so, you see, the Master Calligraphers can't teach reading. Are these all the children? No, oh, there are many others. These lads you see here are waiting their turn at the handlooms. All our students will learn a useful trade. If you'll step this way, I'll show you the more practical side of their education. Here, uh, they can work while waiting their turn for their lessons. Are they paid for their work? Well, we usually sell what they make here. Still, once we deduct our fee and the school's expenses... Uh, I see, Monsieur Raffron. We depend on this income. I'm sure. Because the children's education is free. Of course. Well, in a matter of speaking, I mean, uh, what the children here pay is only five francs apiece. I see. And that's what you call free education. This was approved by the Guild of Master Calligraphers. Their authority's final. I'm sure it is. 
Yes, I'm sure you don't intend to challenge that authority, Monsieur de la Salle. I hope you haven't come as an enemy. Whose enemy? I'm no one's enemy. But I am the children's friend. At Vaugirard, on the outskirts of Paris, we went to work to open our novitiate, using an endowment we had received from the Duc de Mazarin. Be careful you don't fall. <laughs> you don't have to be concerned. I used to run across the roofs when the gendarmes were chasing me. At this time, Brother Vouillard persuaded Father de La Salle to lend 4,000 francs of our endowment to a clergyman named Clément, who wished to establish a training college for teachers. We were later to learn to our surprise that Brother Vouillard had secretly left our order to become director of the college. As soon as the Abbey Clément comes of age, he'll repay the money out of his inheritance. It has been agreed you'll use the money to purchase a house where you plan to establish a school, monsieur. We'll conclude the transaction if you'll please sign this receipt. The Abbe Clement, as a minor, can sign this receipt, but not the deed of purchase for the house. Monsieur Roger, so I'm told, is a trusted friend of your superior? Absolutely. May I request, please, that he sign those papers for me? Don't worry, I'd be happy to. My name will be on the deed of purchase, but the house will still belong to Monsieur Clement. As it says right here, lesson three of courtesy and good manners. Fifth rule of polite society. Never explore your nostrils in the presence of or behind the backs of persons of good breeding. What if my nose itches? <laughs> Gentlemen, this maniac LaSalle is a threat to us and to our guild. He is bent on usurping our authority in the schools. He's replacing our system with a method that's entirely his own. Do you know that he's teaching the students all together instead of one by one? And he doesn't love flogging either. Teaching without whipping? It can't be done. The students keep all they earn, so we lose the extra income. He's insane. This man must be driven out. We have talked to government officials. They flatly refuse to do anything. What more can be done? Stop that man and don't hesitate to use any method. It is necessary to act swiftly, and it is up to us to take the appropriate measures. Get him out! Calm down. Can't we discuss this rationally? No discussion is necessary. We need action. He's right, sir. <laughs> destroyed everything we had. All we owned went up in flames. All but that cross. A sign we should go on fighting. Shall we set the law on those men? No. This will be our answer. You, Brother Auguste, will open another school in Rouen, and you will do the same thing in Calais. My brother Dolan, the hardest of all, he will try to start a school in Rome, no matter how small. Already they have schools here, and here, and here, and in Reims, Chartres, and Moulin. And unless the church takes action, Monsieur de la Chatellerie, this man will control education in the whole realm. Surely his eminence could stop La Salle. Yes, I too am concerned. 
about Father de La Salle's imprudence. De La Salle refuses to submit to church authority, mm -hmm. Monsieur de la Chetardie. Well, in your own parish, he's been teaching French instead of church Latin. How do we convince his eminence? Simply by telling him La Salle's a menace to the church. Why, uh, he's trying to get rid of you. You just mark my words. He's bent on taking your place, just as he attempted to take mine. But we must have concrete evidence against de La Salle. But we do. You must recall how the townspeople attacked his school that day. They've made many complaints against him. What provoked your parishioners into attacking the school here could soon lead to an attack on the church, which protects the school. No. Do you really think so? That might happen. Uh, yes, unless you take action. Well, monsieur... I'll speak with the Cardinal and explain the situation to his eminence. He'll correct the Christian brothers. But it is not the Christian brothers who are at fault. It's LaSalle that's a troublemaker. Tell the Cardinal to send him away. Brother Bartholomew? Yes? Your pardon, the coach of the Vicar General has just drawn up to our gate. Do you know why he's come? No, brother, I don't know. I bet I know why. He's finally here to pay his respects to Father de La Salle. He surely took his time, coming, I mean. Please, Brother Brandre. Brothers, I have the honor of presenting to you the Vicar General, Abbe Pirot, who comes in the name of his eminence. How blessed are the ways of Christianity. Brothers of the Christian schools, Father de La Salle was chosen by God to undertake this important work. He renounced all he possessed to dedicate his entire being to the education of children, supporting with heroism, disappointments and sacrifices. Father de La Salle is a great man. Such greatness, natural and spiritual, lays an obligation on the man to be his successor. There must be a mistake. Why do they wish to appoint another superior? Yes, we protest. That is what his eminence decided. We will not obey this command. Your order requires this obedience. Father de La Salle has been our superior by our choice, and we will accept no other leader. Yes, Brother I beg you, be calm. In the name of God, control yourselves. Look at this, an open rebellion. His eminence has sent us a new superior. We must obey his orders. No. The only superior will obey is Father de La Salle. Dismiss our leader and all the brothers go too. If all the religious orders were as united as this group is, then the Catholic Church would have fewer problems. Still, they disregarded your authority, Your Eminence. True, yes, they did indeed. I'll admit that. But even the Cardinal Archbishop of Paris can detest authority and the obligation to use it. Yes, but Your Eminence... There's nothing to say. Except that early fall is delightful in Paris, and you and your meddling are completely ruining it. Monsieur de La Salle has requested a private audience with your eminence. He's waiting in the outer salon. May I dismiss him? No. I must see him. You may summon him now. You both want to destroy this man. You could be right. Yet you must not deny him his right to speak. And besides, I welcome the opportunity to see this monster. Your blasphemous LaSalle. Can I leave then? Well, if his presence is embarrassing, you may leave. You're permitted to stay and listen in the next room. You'll be listening anyway, I suppose. Show in LaSalle. Come closer. You requested an audience with me. Why? To ask your forgiveness for not having been able to discipline my brothers. I consider that rather strange since your field is education. Do you realize the trouble you've been causing here in Paris and everywhere else you've been? Yes, I do, Your Eminence. Why do you feel the need to reform our schools? The methods of teaching you oppose have served us well during the last ten decades. There is no reason to change. Your Eminence, if we do not change ourselves, others will do it for us. That's possible. But you have decided that no ordained priest can join your order. 
Yes, Your Eminence, and I also explained why. The brothers are educators, not priests. Do you know what this will do? Not yet, Your Eminence. It will expel you from my see. I had to sign this order. And now, Monsieur de la Salle, have you anything more to say? Only that I regret being responsible for the disgust you must have felt when you signed it. And nothing else? Nothing. As long as our work goes on, it doesn't matter where I am. I can find God any place. When shall I go? I expect you might first wish to settle your affairs. I only need a few minutes. I have no baggage. May I leave now? What does your eminence think of him? He's no man to take lightly. I quite comprehend your concern. But now... But now, your eminence? I'm sure an enemy so damaging to you. We'd best not let out of our sight. Look, his worries are gone. Thanks to his eminence. Mm, I hope our good luck continues. Has there been any news of Brother Villar? Why not since he left with the Abbe Clément? I see, but I'm afraid we need his help at the moment. He loaned some of our money to the Abbe Clément, who hasn't given it back. If there's been any duplicity, I'll make Villar answer. No, 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 no. It'll be all right. There's a gentleman who's come to call. Shall I say you're busy? No, I'll go with you. Today, nothing is a chore. <laughs> you Monsieur de la Salle? Yes. Sir, I have the honor to be His Majesty's Chief Surgeon. And I am also the father of Abbe Clément. Well, I'm very glad to meet you, sir. Won't you come in? This will only take a moment. I'll tell you why I've come here. To unmask your hypocrisy. It's a lie, absolutely untrue. Monsieur de la Salle, you inveigled my son into putting up money to purchase a house. You tricked him into buying it for you. But he is the one who insisted on buying it. For months, I refused to accept it. Hmm. Your friend, Monsieur Roger, signed the deed of purchase for you. I do not even deal with him. Admit it. Never. And I know nothing about this negotiation. Brother Vuillard took care of it on my behalf. The brothers loaned your son that money. He signed a receipt. A falsification, or some scheme of yours. I suspect that my son got tricked into signing that. Sir, please don't go on insulting me. Simply bring your son here. He will not be able to deny what I've told you. He's gone away. He fled abroad for fear of your reprisals. He cannot afford to lose the money you shamefully stole from him. Nor can we afford to lose the money we've given him. It's not ours. It was to serve a sacred cause. By God, what lies! The money belongs to him. Monsieur de la Salle. If you don't pay it back, you'll answer for this treachery in a court of law. Pardon the delay, but Monsieur Villard is quite busy at the moment. But he will be here shortly. Did you tell him who we are? Perhaps you'd better. Monsieur Villard knows you are here. Maybe he doesn't want to see us. Yes, so it appears. Well, I'm glad Father de la Salle was too sick to come here. My brother. What I really meant was, it's good we came instead. So sorry I kept you waiting. Ah, you come on business, gentlemen? Brother Vuillard, I'm amazed. I insist that you not call me Brother Vuillard, since I am no longer a member of your order. Obviously, but I'm shocked at your appearance. My distaste for this habit would shock you even more, I think. You're greedy and unscrupulous. And so you renounce the solemn oaths you took. Obedience and poverty never quite appealed to me. But you swore. That means nothing. We came to speak to you about other matters, however. The Abbe Clément. Oh, oh, that's what concerns you. But I'm unable to tell you a thing. But you're the one, Villar, who handled the loan on behalf of us all. I'm not one of you now. But they can't blame Father de La Salle. You must speak out. Monsieur de La Salle is very eloquent. He'll prove his innocence. You surely have no reason to fear for him. But won't you testify, Vuillard? 
The father of Clément is esteemed by the entire court, indeed. He has much influence with the king. I can't help you without also jeopardizing my position. Clément could ruin me if I testified against him. Then you'll not. No, I regret to say. Please excuse me now. There are other matters I must attend to. Good day. He's a traitor. A renegade. There were 12 of us, and he was our Judas. But Monsieur Roger can still help. Dear Brother André, I have been to see Brother Villar, but to no avail. You, Brother André, are to take his place. Perhaps it was I who failed him in some way or other. How blind of me not to have understood sooner. I am convinced now that if I remain in Paris any longer, our entire work may be destroyed because of me. If this is really God's work, he will help it in my absence to stand on its own. I am therefore leaving for the South where I've been asked to open several schools. Brother Bartholomew will be your superior here. I have entrusted our friend Rogier to defend our cause if the Clément affair should go to court. One thing more, Brother André, before I say goodbye. And I have not told Brother Bartholomew this. We may not see each other again. I am very sick, though no one knows, and you must keep the secret. But whatever happens, this work, our work, is in the hands of Providence. I shall keep informed about what happens in Paris, where my presence has only been an obstacle. And I shall rejoice with you, though far away. Goodbye, André. God bless you. some bread, Jean. But you know it's dangerous to be seen in this territory if you're a priest. You could be murdered by the commissars. That's all the help we can give you. You'd better be on your way, monsieur, but beware. Thank you. Where are you bound? I don't know. A long way. Where are you going? To Mont. I'll take you there. I can't pay you. I don't want you to pay. Climb up. Yeah. From Paris. <laughs> you don't seem too afraid of the commissards. Should I be? Well, I can tell you're not a priest. The commissards scare them away. They just look at a priest and go crazy. They turn as crimson as their shirts. Red shirts? <laughs> their hearts are black, but their shirts are red. <laughs> <laughs> Monsieur, look. They passed this way. They've been terrorizing the countryside. Looting and killing. That's their kind of rebellion. But they're murderers. Well, I know, but up until now, 
They were granted the freedom to practice their own religion. I know. By the Edict of Nantes. Yes, but the edict was revoked, and now they're trying to blame all the clergy. The king has ordered his soldiers to subdue the commissars, but it's no use. <laughs> you were the law? I try to fight evil when I can. Oh, a doctor? Is that what you are? Sort of. What kind of doctor are you? I take care of children. I've been expecting them. Ho! Comrades! Any news? Plenty. I've been informed a priest is coming our way. His name is LaSalle, the one who's been setting up schools. And where is he going? Don't know yet, but I'll find out. Who's your passenger? Monsieur, here's a doctor from Paris. Does he look like a priest? <laughs> well, he seems all right. Take him along with you, Fontaine. Right. Ooh! That man, Lassalle, the one you mentioned, is he coming soon? He's here. He came today. Where did you know me? How do you know who I am? It's a secret, Monsieur LaSalle. I'm sure you'll be safe, but just in case, don't tell anybody who you are. Thank you, Monsieur Fontaine. What can I offer you? Not a thing. I'm not Fontaine. I'm Colonel Dupont. A retired colonel? Oh, I'm active. I'll be in trouble if they ever catch on to me. You going to Parmenia? They've told me there's a hermitage there where no one asks where you're from or who you are. Is it far? Oh, ten leagues. Take a shepherd boy as a guide. Well, Monsieur de la Salle, good luck. I'll be with you, Colonel Dupont. And thank you in the name of all foolhardy travelers. <laughs> Goodbye. Get up! Come on, get up! <sighs> What's your name? Felix. Are you from Parmenia? Yes, Father. Can you read and write? Why no, Father. But I know how to tell when there'll be rain in the valley and how to catch rabbits for summer. <laughs> and what do you do in Parmenia? Tend the sheep and keep the wolves away. Why do you walk so fast? I suppose I walk fast because my legs are so long. But why walk fast if I'm not going anywhere? Monastery? The monastery is further up the mountain. This is where Sister Louise lives. She hasn't a lot, yet she manages to feed them all. They say she makes whole meals out of herbs and grass. She's a saint. Why do you think that? Why? Because it's true. She makes miracles happen, you'll see. We're not too uneasy about Father de La Salle's absence. 
until the day we were summoned to court to listen to the accusations brought against him by Monsieur Clément. Clément claimed that our superior had extorted money from his son to purchase the training college. I contend that this man is fully responsible for the fraud perpetrated against my son, and I demand retribution. Mark that in the record. Then Monsieur Clément was questioned by the procurator about the receipt his son had signed in the presence of Brother Vuillard and Monsieur Roger. I maintain my son was tricked into signing it by La Salle's duplicity. It was a calculated plot. Monsieur Roger was then called as a witness. Since he had acted as Father de La Salle's agent in the affair, we were certain that his testimony would bring out the truth. How surprised we were to hear Monsieur Roger proclaim instead. I, uh, I am in total accord with, uh, with Monsieur Vuillard and Clément. The court has already heard their, uh, testimony. I confirm it all. You're under Roger was then reminded by the magistrate that he was under oath. But intimidated by the schoolmasters and Clément's friends, he repeated the lie. Yes. By Almighty God. We knew then that all was lost. And consequently, this tribunal finds Jean-Baptiste de La Salle, so-called superior of the brothers of the Christian schools, guilty of influencing a minor under the law for his own gain and profit. Said Jean-Baptiste de La Salle must now pay Monsieur L'Abbé Clement. After the trial, our situation in Paris became very critical, and the church authorities even threatened to dissolve our order. It was therefore decided that I should go in search of Father de La Salle and bring him back to Paris. Come in. Brother Bartolome. Your disguise is excellent, Brother Andre. You will need it when traveling through Commissard country in the south. Be very careful. Here is the letter we drew up this afternoon and a complete record of the lawsuit. It is for him. And here is some money. Almost nothing I know in view of the long journey ahead of you, but we have very little left after paying Abbe Clément. Don't worry. It'll be enough. Goodbye, Brother Bartolome. Well, one thing more. Above all, do not lose courage, no matter what happens. For how long it takes, you must find him. The life of our society is in your hands. With the help of God, I'm sure I can bring him back. by the news I brought and were unable to tell me the whereabouts of our superior. I trudged on, sometimes hopefully, but more often with a heavy heart. Finally in Grenoble, I learned that Father de La Salle had gone to the Carthusian Monastery in the high mountain country above the city. Yes, 
Parmenia. Only a day's journey. I knew that my search was at an end. For the villagers had also spoken to me about the holy priest who lived in the hermitage on the mountain, and about Sister Louise who took care of the pilgrims. I would find her, and then... Yes, brother. Your superior, Monsieur de La Salle, has been with us. But he may not wish to see you. All he wants is privacy and peace. It's most important that I speak to him. But, sister, I've been concerned about his health. I must tell you that he's very sick. Brother Andre, this year he suffered so much, I tried to persuade him to go to Grenoble, where there are doctors, but no. How is he now? A little better, thank God. Ah, oh, but he's a stubborn man. He refuses to do as I say. He won't stay in bed. <laughs> is he far from here? Not far. I'll show you. Up there. What's the matter? Our community in Paris is in serious trouble. Ecclesiastical authorities want to revise the rules of the Brotherhood. But they wouldn't dare. They say if we resist any of their changes, they'll dissolve the order. What? Just when we're ready to extend our work, to build schools in every corner of the world. Yes, I know. And now the very existence of our order is at stake. We need your counsel, Father. Come back to us. Only you can help us now. I can't. I mustn't go back. This is for you. What is it? Appeal that the brothers sign asking you to return. But I mustn't. It's been written by the superior of our order. Mine as well as yours. Will you read it? No. There's nothing I can do now. I'm a sick man. I'm tired. It would only be interference. Father, with all due respect... Remember your vow of obedience. Listen. Threatened by innumerable perils, we turn to you in all humility, and we order you to return to your former post as head of our community, and we vow our obedience and love. soon overcame all the dangers that had threatened our society. That is, all save one, the danger we dreaded most. But why so soon? Or does it only seem that way to me? Answer me. We don't understand what you mean. Yes, you do. There are so many projects I would like to have seen realized. So much still to do. So much scarcely begun. That's true. But we don't know how to go on. Of course you do. 
But there are so few of you. We'll always have enough students, but teachers, real teachers, the kind I've dreamt of, how difficult they are to find. I've used up my life searching for them. We've 30 schools established now. Hmm. 30 drops of water in the desert, but they're valuable. And you all will achieve what I couldn't. Thousands of schools. All over the world. We'll do it, I know. But not without you. With me or without me, remain as united as you are now. Even more than now. When I am no longer with you, Will you promise me that? We promise. But you're tired now. You should be in bed as a doctor ordered. You need rest if you're to get better. speak, Father. I've come to tell you that another novice has joined us. One more. He comes to replace someone. Why are you all here? Have you left the children all alone? It's, it's their recreation hour. I don't hear them. We ask the students to please be silent. Let them play as they always do. I want to hear them. possessed by possessions, to give, to receive, to reason, to share. Children know this. There is no class distinction among them. If I can open their minds and let the sun enter in, if enough of us can do this, if we can reach beyond the boundaries marked rich and poor, if we can open their minds to this light, the world will become a brighter place, closer to peace, closer to human fraternity. <laughs> <laughs> 